So uh, we saw how to create a contract, uh, how to deploy it, um, and we talked about different types of view. Okay, so now what we're gonna look at, it is something called uh, the factory pattern. The idea behind the factory pattern is about having a contract, which is, uh, um, which is basically this file that we just created, this storage file we created here. And we're gonna have another contract, which is gonna be the factory. And all the factory does, as you know, will be to build, to create other contracts. So where does this come from? This comes from the single responsibility principle um, in which a class does need to know how you have to create, how to create instances um, of other classes. And uh, it's a pattern that I use every day with my daily job when I use uh, C Sharp. It's an abstraction, essentially. Okay, so you have a creator and uh, this, can be, uh, this can be used effectively. Why you wanna use uh, this pattern in Solidity. Um, so one reason is you wanna create uh, multiple instances of the same contract and uh, you look for a way to keep track of them and make their management easier. So for example, here we created a contract for students. You could create several contracts for students, okay? And each contract would be slightly different and managed, uh, would have a different set of data. For example, in here I made a, in this example I made a class. So my factory would actually be able to retrieve the class of students. Another reason that you wanna use the factory pattern is that it would actually save gas on the deployment. So you can deploy the factory and then use it later to deploy other contracts. Uh, another reason which uh, it's a bit long to explain, so I'm gonna skip on it, is the fact that you actually improve uh, the security of the contract. So, um, when we are going to interact uh, with uh, uh, smart contracts, you need to be aware of two things. You're going to need to have the address of the contract uh, and something called ABI, which stands for Application Binary Interface. What the ABI does, to be really, really brief, is essentially the information about the function signatures. Okay, so a little bit when uh, in uh, a class, you import another class, you have other methods that you can access to. Uh, that is essentially um, the example. So, but let's stop talking and uh, let's have a look at how we can actually create a storage uh, factory. Okay, so here I'm gonna go back inside my file explorer and inside the same contract folder, I'm gonna create a new file, which I'm gonna call the storagefactory.sol. Now the headers are gonna be exactly the same as the one we used in here. We're gonna have our license and we're gonna have our pragma for which version of 3D to use. Then we're gonna have our contract, which is gonna call the, uh, simply storage factory. And inside here, we want to have a contract. So the first thing we wanna have is a function that is gonna create our contracts. So we're gonna have a create storage and this function is gonna be public. And what does this function do? This function is gonna create a new class of type storage. How can we do this? So one way would be I could take this, I could copy, I could paste it in here. And now I actually have access to my storage. So I could actually say that my storage storage is equal to new storage and I've created uh, my class. However, we talked about the principle of single responsibility before. So importing all of this copy paste code also doesn't uh, fit in any of the programming paradigms I know, such as don't repeat yourself, etc. So let's go ahead and delete all of this and let's use the import statement, which is the same one as you might be accustomed when you use JavaScript, TypeScript, equivalent when you do uh, the using keyword in C Sharp uh, and other programming languages. So we import the name, so storage.sol in here, and this is essentially equivalent to copy paste the code, which is essentially what I've done earlier. So if I copy this, if I import this and now I, um, okay. Okay, so I have my storage and then what I'm gonna do with the storage? I need to actually be able to use it. And because this one is a factory, we need to be able to access all the instances of the factory. So we are going to create 
an array of data like before we did an array of students now we're going to make an array of contracts of type storage so we're going to have a storage of type array which is going to be public and, it, and we're just going to call it a storage array let's keep consistent and call it my storage array and once i create this function what i'm going to do i'm going to take my storage array dot push and I push my storage okay the warning goes away the next bit that we need to do uh, i've created this public function okay so if i now go back to the deploy tab we make sure that you go back into one of the javascript vms and we can deploy our factory so in this tab as you can see contract we have two options we have the storage which is the one we were using before but we also have the storage factory so we can go and select the storage factory and hit deploy so our storage has been deployed and I have my, my storage array. I can create the storage. Okay, so it's gonna call this function. My local array, my storage array, which is public, can actually be accessed. So I could actually do, I can access to it at index zero and I get the address of my storage array. However, what is going to happen is that, well, I could actually use uh, uh, some tools that I'm going to talk about in the future where you can actually inspect it. However, at this stage, I have no way to access my, uh, my contract. So I need to create another function that is going to be of type view in which I'm going to allow to see the value um, of the items that I put inside uh, the storage. So I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call it storage get storage contract. And what do I need in here? I need uh, exactly what I have in here, the index, which is of type u uh, unsigned integer. And we're gonna call it, uh, we're gonna call this my index. Now this function is of type, is public, is a view function. And what is going to return? Is going to return essentially an address, uh, an address type. So now if the compiler is complaining, uh, oh, we need a returns. Okay, returns an address. So this one is the index of my storage and I'm gonna use a, a function that we haven't yet used, all right? So what is uh, this function that I'm gonna use? It's the function address. So I'm gonna access my simple storage. It's gonna be accessed by doing uh, my storage array and then I'm gonna access by my index. So I created my array and I return it through my index and I want to return the address of this function. So actually I can do address of the function. So I'm gonna do return. So I save it. And now I have my own function that I can actually deploy. So storage factory, let's make sure it's the correct one, the one we deploy. We have a second deployment. And now if I click put in, in here at zero, uh, what is happening? Okay, we are getting uh, the data coming from the storage array. All right, so we have access to the address of the function, but we want to get the value that was stored inside my contract. So if we go back inside my previous example, I have this function here that is a view function that stores data. Um, so I'm gonna add here a new function that is gonna return a student. Given an index is gonna provide me with a student. So I'm going to create a function that is going to return me uh, the name of one of my students. So we are gonna add this function to get the name of a student. We're gonna call it get, stu get student. And we're gonna take a uh, unsigned integer of 256. So it's gonna have the index at which I'm interested to. It's gonna be a public function. It's gonna be a view and it's gonna return a string. And I want the string to be in memory. Now, the next bit is going to be uh, to retrieve the correct classroom of my student. So I'm going to return classroom at my index. And then I'm going to access the name property on the student. Uh, okay, he has returned. That's muscle memory. Okay, so I have my student function. Let's have a look if it actually works. So storage, let's deploy it. Okay, so we can get our student that we are gonna um, test it. So we have the storage class that we just deployed and we're gonna add the class 
so the transaction is successful and we're gonna get the student at position zero and you're gonna get me if i'm gonna add another one get student position one we get it correctly so now what we can do we can move on on the our storage factory and we can actually get the values that we need so we're gonna create a new function that is going to return it's essentially the same as the one before so it's gonna have a function and we're gonna call it get student name and here we're gonna need two things we're gonna in need the index of the class that we are interested in because we can have multiple classes we can create multiple uh, indexes and now we're gonna have the index of the student and this one is public it's a view it returns a string and it's gonna be in memory so we're gonna get the storage class we're gonna call it uh, classroom and this one is equal to storage and we're gonna provide the address of the class so essentially i'm gonna copy this line and gonna paste it in here but now this one the my index is gonna be the class index called it class index because it, i think it's more appropriate for uh, our use case and now once that we have our classroom we can do we can actually access our classroom dot and then we can actually call the get student and we're gonna have the student index let's see if it compiles successfully looks like it does so let's close all of those uh, deployments we've done so far so we are still in the javascript vm and now we're gonna deploy the storage factory so we deploy it and now we have the latest uh, storage factory so we can create a storage for my classes i'm gonna create two of those and actually now I realize that i need to make a function that is going to actually store the data as well okay because because of course these classes are empty so let's do a function essentially uh, you got the gist so essentially it's pretty much the same i access so i'm gonna uh essentially do the same as when i add to class okay so i'm gonna access this function from outside from the factory but essentially i'm gonna duplicate this function here for simplicity so save student or let's say add student and this one is the index and then we're gonna have string memory um, and we're gonna call it student name and then string memory student age actually this one is unsigned integer and this one is not a public view but is simply a public function with a side effect like the one we have um, above so we access our storage room and now in the classroom we access the add to class so we do add to class and the first parameter is going to be the student name and the second parameter is going to be the student age and of course we remove the return keyword because now this one is unnecessary um, i think this one is unnecessary yeah that was the mistake so let's deploy let's close this we are in uh, the javascript vm we have the storage factory we deploy it so what we're we gonna do we're gonna create a new storage and now at index zero let's run this so at index zero which is the class we just created we're gonna add uh, myself and we're gonna have some values and then we're gonna add another one okay so we can create a second storage so now class index one we're gonna put fred and we're gonna put them okay so now we can actually read the student names so to get the student names we want to know at class index zero student index zero so i should get my name at student index one i should get lorena at class index zero uh well, sorry class index one student index zero I should get fred and then at index one i should actually get sam so this is a very simple use case for a storage class and i hope you enjoyed the video please share and subscribe if you liked it Bye bye